If I could offer a single piece of advice to help a modern audience approach Vincenzo Bellini's magnificent bel canto opera I Capuletti e i Montecchi, it would be to forget that Shakespeare ever wrote a play called Romeo and Juliet. That was Dr. Philip Gossett speaking about Vincenzo Bellini's opera I Capuletti e i Montecchi, The Capulets and the Montagues. What does he mean about forget Shakespeare? Well, stay tuned, and during the intermission of this broadcast, you'll hear more from Dr. Gossett about that subject. In the meantime, we invite you to hear the complete opera from Lyric Opera of Chicago. This is Norman Pellegrini, your host for these Lyric Opera radio broadcasts of the 2001-2002 season, with the third of eight operas in this series. With a libretto by Felice Romani, Bellini's Capuletti e Montecchi will be heard in two acts in Italian, with mezzo-soprano Veselina Casarova as Romeo, soprano Andrea Rost as Giulietta, tenor Fabio Sartori in his American opera debut as Tebaldo, bass Umberto Cumo in his lyric opera debut as Lorenzo, and bass baritone Jeffrey Wells as Capello. Bruno Campanella, in his lyric opera debut, conducts the lyric opera orchestra and chorus. Donald Palumbo is lyric's chorus master. This is the Ameritech production of Bellini's The Capulet and the Montagues. Its revival is made possible by the Elizabeth Morse Genius Charitable Trust. It was staged by Giulio Chazelet, with sets and costumes by Ulisse Santiki, lighting by Christine Binder, and choreography by Sarah Stewart. During our intermission, we'll hear from Maestro Campanella, and we'll have more from Dr. Philip Gossett, Professor of Music and the Humanities at the University of Chicago. For most of us, the story of Romeo and Juliet brings to mind the play by William Shakespeare, but the Bard's plays were not known in Italy until 50 years after Bellini and his librettist Romani wrote their opera on the subject. Earlier versions of the story, however, existed in French, English, and Italian, some of them dating nearly three centuries before Shakespeare's play. It was from one of these that Romani took his text, but his work for Bellini was not his first libretto on the subject. Several years before, he'd written a text on the Capulets and the Montagues for a very successful but now forgotten opera by Nicola Vacai. For Bellini's opera, Romani simply trimmed down his first version and added a few new verses to accommodate some music Bellini recycled from one of his earlier works. Such recycling of text and music, of course, was a common practice at that time. Thus, we shouldn't be surprised to find that Bellini's opera is not quite the same as the more familiar story by Shakespeare. Several of the bard's characters do not appear in the opera at all. Mercutio, Paris, Juliet's nurse, and Juliet's mother all are missing. And the character we know as Friar Lawrence is named Lorenzo in the opera, where he's not a Franciscan friar, but a doctor for the Capulet family. Concentrating almost entirely on Romeo and Juliet, Romeo and Giulietta in the opera, and the forces of their battling families, Bellini's opera contains just five characters, Romeo, Giulietta, Lorenzo, Juliet's father, Capello, and Tebaldo, whom Shakespeare, of course, called Tybalt. The setting is 14th century Verona in northern Italy, and the story takes place in the palace of Giulietta's family, the Capuleti. In the first scene of the opera, partisans gather before dawn in a hall of the Capuleti palace. In the ongoing war between the Guelphs and the Ghibellines, the Capuleti side with the Guelphs, who support the Pope and the various city-states of the region. They anticipate new fighting with the Montecchi, their traditional enemies, who represent the Ghibellines, aristocratic families. They support the German emperor in his plan to conquer the entire region. The partisans' discussion attests to the ongoing hatred between the two warring factions. And this is the opening chorus of the opera. Tebaldo, another partisan, and Capello, Giulietta's father, arrive, disclosing that a powerful Ghibelline army led by Romeo is preparing to attack. Capello identifies Romeo as the leader of the Ghibelline Montecchi and also as the man who killed his son in battle. Capello says that Romeo, leader of the Montecchi, is sending an ambassador to offer peace. Lorenzo, the family physician and friend of the Capuletti, tries to persuade Capello that it would be both useful and honorable to forge a pact with the Montecchi to end their long rivalry. 
enough blood has already been shed, he says. But Capello scorned this idea, vowing to avenge the death of his son, whom Romeo killed in battle. Since Romeo left Verona as a child, none of the Capuleti know him, although he's believed to have returned to the city several times, as indeed he has. We learn later that he and Giulietta have already pledged their love in secret visits together. Tebaldo vows to kill Romeo as revenge for the death of Capello's son, and he swears to do so in the name of Giulietta, whom he also loves. Capello promises Tebaldo that Giulietta will be his bride, and they'll be married that very day. Although Lorenzo pleads that the girl is not well and could be brought to the altar only by force, her father will not be dissuaded. Tebaldo expresses his love for Giulietta in his aria La Motanto, and her father sends Lorenzo to inform the girl of her impending marriage. As the Motecchi ambassador approaches, Capello asks his men if any of them wish to accept a proposal of peace. Their response is a resounding vow of eternal hatred for the Montecchi and all they represent. The Montecchi ambassador arrives. It is Romeo himself, but since none of the Capuleti have seen him since he was a child, he is not recognized. Romeo proposes peace and friendship between the two families. He suggests that both groups should have equal influence in Verona and that Giulietta should be married to Romeo. When his plan is rejected, he points out that if Romeo killed Capello's son, it was done in battle for which only fate can be blamed. He suggests that Romeo should become Capello's son, his cavatina, Se Romeo to Cise un figlio. Capello informs him that Giulietta is already promised to another son, and Tebaldo affirms it is he who will marry the girl. Astounded and angered by this news, Romeo vows to renew the battle between the two camps. La tremenda ultrice spada, he sings, triggering a response of battle cries from the Capuleti. For this lyric opera production of Bellini's The Capulets and the Montagues, the stage is flanked by two vertical white marble slabs, one of them carved with the figure of Romeo, the other with that of Giulietta, resembling the stone covers made for graves. Designer Ulisse Santichi's unit set depicts a hall in the Capuleti Palace, with the walls, ceiling, and steeply raked stage floor covered in a black, reflective surface that provides a striking background for the luxurious costumes. The Capuleti men wear doublets and hose with magenta cloaks and a variety of shades, and they carry colorful banners that resemble stained glass. Romeo wears a purple doublet and pale lavender cape. Tibaldo wears a brocade tunic of maroon and gold. Capello governs the meeting from a white throne at center stage, dressed in a fuchsia robe. As Romeo, we are to hear Veselina Casarova, the mezzo-soprano. As Tebaldo, Fabio Sartori, the Italian tenor making his American opera debut, by the way, Lorenzo is Umberto Cumo, an Italian bass, in his lyric opera debut, and Capello is bass baritone Jeffrey Wells. Our conductor is Bruno Campanella in his lyric opera debut. Lyric's chorus master is Donald Palumbo. And now, here is maestro Bruno Campanella, from Lyric Opera of Chicago. We shall have Act One, Scene One of I Capuleti e Montecchi, The Capulets and the Montagues by Bellini. 